Okay, having created an alignment, we'll now create the corridor. Under Corridors tab, go Create Corridor, and we'll name the corridor. Call it US2 Rows. Using the new alignment for horizontal and vertical, we want to create ties with the web rope clipped. And leave these as they are for the moment, and click OK. That brings us to the corridor template. So we'll begin at station zero and call the template USQ. Submit that. And that opens up the profile view here to which we can add instructions. The yellow dot represents the end view of that alignment. So the first one is going to be an offset instruction from new alignment the offset is going to be 4 meters minus 3% and it's going to be called edge of surface ride. We'll add that. We'll also add the left hand lane, which will be minus 4 and minus 3%. And that will be called edge of surface left. Add that. Then we'll carry out another 2 meters in the same grade to create the shoulder which we'll call Edge of Formation Ride. Similarly, from the edge of surface left, we'll create a minus two and a minus three for the edge of formation left. And if you want to edit an instruction, it's just that one there. So left is minus, negative entry. Now we want to apply super elevation to this. So these are the four nodes that it'll apply to. Notice that this is what's being created from the center line as we put them in. Now we want this to bank up as we go around the corner, so we'll add an instruction, which will be a super elevation instruction, which identifies the new alignment as a crown node. And we'll use the new alignment as the node to pivot around as well. So add the nodes which will be affected by super elevation, which is these four. Add those and just slide along that alignment a little bit just to make sure it's working and we can see a fair bit of vertical exaggeration going on there so if I hold down the shift control keys I can rationalize that a little bit using the scroll wheel vertical exaggeration is used quite extensively with road cross sections because of the very small cross fall grades So the next instruction we want to do is put the drains on either side. And then from the drains we'll create the cut and fill batters. Which will either cut upwards to daylight or downwards to the ground. So they will be an offset and elevation instruction. The first one will be from the edge of formation right. Now, by using offset and elevation, we can use meters. So we'll go out by two and down by one, which is negative one. And this will be the drain right. So add that, and that puts us down there. And do the same thing for the left, edge of formation left, minus two and minus one. 
two drain left, which we can add. And now we'll daylight these. And from here, it's a side slope instruction. So the first one will be drain right using web road clip. The cut slope will be one is to two. This can be set as rise is to going or going is to rise. In this case, we've got rise to going. The offset ditch will be just half a meter. And then one is to two again here. So that's going to be for daylight right, which we'll add. And do the same on the other side. So choosing the drain left, we'll do one is to two again. Half a meter ditch. And one is to two here, making it daylight left. Add that one in. So now as we slide through the alignment, you can see that all the red's going to be cut and everything blue is going to be filled. So we can't really do earthworks volumes from that because this is a finished surface. So what we need to do is define a subgrade. Because this is pavement, it's not part of the earthworks. So say that's a 300 mil pavement, what we can do is add a new instruction, which will be offset and elevation. It's going to be from the original alignment, it's going to be a zero offset, and it's going to be minus 0 0.3. And that is going to be the subgrade center line. Now it's not a finished surface, so untick that and just add that. Now what we need to do is create a new material layer and call it subgrade. So press enter and close that. And go to edit corridor template. So now we need to add new instructions. Now this is going to be a slope to slope instruction. So we're going to use node to node. So we can pick up parallels from existing slopes. This is going to be from 10 using the slope 1 to 4. And the second slope is going to be using nodes 4 and 6. Add that one. And do the same thing on the other side. Nominate the first node as 10. Nominate the slope between these nodes. The second node will nominate as that one between 5 and 7. And we'll name both of these. And this one will be called subgrade hinge left. And we'll go back and name the first one subgrade hinge right. Update the instructions. 
So now we have our road profile including a subgrade. And we're ready to do earthworks volumes. And if we just have a quick look at that in 3D, you can see what that's going to look like through there. And you can move the pivot point by using the Alt key. And look at that anywhere along there. And you can see that nice big sweeping curve through there. And it's looking good. So we'll do Earthworks Volumes. So from Reports, go to Earthworks Reports. It's going to be surface to surface between Web Road Clipped and USQ Roads that we just created. Click OK. So if we look at that Earthworks Report, you can see that the cut is far outweighing fill. So it's cut too far in. So what we'll do is bring that up. The way to do that is to go into alignments and open a new profile view. So what we need to do is raise everything up by a bit. So if you go to the edit window, vertical, I'll just go through these and make changes to this column here. So I've updated everything by about 300 mil. And you can pause that if you want to see what changes were implemented there. So now we'll run the Earthworks report again. got a small excess. Ideally what you're aiming for is about 10% excess. If you were going to tweak it again this is where you would do it. Make sure you align the ends with the existing roads. It is important to remember that the tools I've shown here are designed to make this process easier and more accurate. It is particularly suited to machine control but you also need to have a solid understanding of the Ostro's design standards. And what I've shown here is just to show you the tools. I hope you found it useful.